topic. What I want to talk about is where Mediafront is powerful. And where Mediafront is powerful is whenever you de start dealing with playlists. This is where you really start to experience the power of, of that Mediafront offers because it's, it's a playlist generated type of um, interface. So let's just take this grid for an example. This is a view that I created. The view is bringing in the media content type. I'm filtering the view based on media content type. And I've just already picked out the fields to show it as a grid. A very common use case is someone says, I just want to show a player up at the top and that basically follows my grid of, of media. You see these on like, um, um, like the trailer websites where you'll see a player up there and you'll see a grid of thumbnails and then they just play in the order of the grid. This is also really easy in Mediafront. I go and I click Edit View. In Mediafront 2.0 exposes what's called an area handler in, in views. And an area handler is basically just saying, okay, I want to take up this area with some widget. But the cool thing is, is the area handler is associated with the view, so it knows about the view. So to do that, what you're going to do is in the header, you're just going to say, I want to add something. You're going to filter by global. And in here, you'll see global media player. I just say add to display. You pick your preset. If I had more than one preset, I could pick more than one. And I hit apply and I hit save. And that's it. Check it out. The reason why that was so easy is because the media player already knows about the view. And so this will actually play in the order that you see them. So after, after the uh, Muppets is done, it will jump right to the next one and, and play as a playlist. So you have like out of the box automatic playlist generation without touching any code, without doing anything. You have, you have an automatic playlist. One thing that Mediafront 1.0 did do that this one doesn't is if I, if you click on these, it loads them in the, in the player. I have not decided if that's actually a good pattern yet, so I haven't implemented it um, just because it's, it's unnatural for a person to click on something and it not take them to a page. So I haven't really decided what I'm going to do with that one yet. If, if you want that... Make that a formatter. Make a formatter that you can apply. Okay. That's yep. what I, I'm with him on that one. Just make it a, just make it a formatter, say I want, the, I want to throw this into the media yep. player. Yeah, do that. You got it. <laughs> I, I, it's obvious I listen to you, Chris. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> do that, it'd be awesome. People can do whatever they want. Right, cool. Would it cool. be beneficial to, to drag, the, uh, drag their screen to the top where the uh, video is being loaded? So that way, if they click one that's really far down, because that's like less, they don't just click it and go, okay, did that do anything? Oh, you to make it scroll. I'm sure the formatter could do that. Yeah. So um, now that I've actually shown that, I'm I'm going to um, create a new page to do some other, some other really cool stuff. So I'm going to just create a new page, and this one I'm going to call Player Grid, and it uh, it copies everything from the original page. I want to get first of all, I want to get rid of um, this one for this display. Now, something that, uh, that I also see a lot is people, um, let me just go to player grid. Uh, so like a, a great example is like Wikipedia or Wikimedia. You'll see that every single grid is a player. Mediafront 2.0 allows this because of the way it's architected. It's now field-based, so you could actually do that. And let me just show you how to do that real quick. So Mediafront presets, I'm going to create a preset that's going to be my grid player. So everything starts, if you have a, if you have, if you already know that you're going to want a media player that's going to look different, in your head, you need to be thinking, I need to create a preset for that. Presets are cheap. And in, in the my player settings, my presentation settings, I'm going to make this, I'm going to make it like 250 by, uh, actually I'll make it 200 by 300, or 250 by 2, two that's, that should be good. That's probably a little too big. We'll make it 200 by 150. Okay, that should be that should be good enough at least to drive the point across. So now that I have a preset, you, you notice how, how easy that was. I mean, it's like simple to create a preset. I go to my view, I click edit, and then I go. So now that it's a now that it's field based, I can click on any one of these fields and I get my media front settings for every single field in my view. Um, I don't want to exclude it because I want to actually show it now. 
But what I do want to do is I want to change the formatter to media front player. And I want to select my grid player. So now it is going to format that field as a media player with the grid format. And I need to make sure my media front settings is media, media content. I'm going to apply. I'm going to make sure I don't show my, I'm not going to show my, how oh, did I apply that to all displays? <laughs> you just the last one. Uh, it's, it's, it's all right. Um, hey, we're in, we're in Drupal 6 all day, man. It's okay. Oh. So let me just, yeah, so all right, let me just do this real quick. So I go exclude uh, media front player, grid player, media front, and I only want to apply to this page. And I want to remove this page. I want to exclude that. So now, this is something you could not do in MediaFront 1.0. I just got a question about that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> we've got several of these uh, for clients in, uh, in Drupal 6, and we used um, uh, embedded uh, media for it. And I was just curious, does, does this one load every uh, video before the page is done, or is it just loaded? It it so the way that the way that MediaFront is it works. Of course, I'm trying to get this common across all players because all players behave differently. But as far as HTML5 is concerned, it loads to the point where it gets the metadata and stops loading. So if your metadata is at the beginning of the file, if you've encoded it properly, it'll load to the metadata and stop. If you've if you've encoded your media field improperly, it will load the entire video until it gets the metadata and then stop. So it depends on how you encode it. Okay. So like we just did it for like YouTube videos and put it in there. I believe YouTube YouTube is fine because yeah. YouTube does that automatically. They they will just display it and they they don't they don't they load don't it load until it. you play. Okay. So cool. if you're using YouTube, that's great. This this is perfect. And and I, at first when I first when I showed this, I couldn't really think of a use case of why you would do this. But this is really good within like um, the slideshow, like the um, the views carousels and all mm -hmm. that that you can. Oh sure. Yeah, you could do that. You could do that with this. So is that are those are the first? Is the metadata correct in the first ones, and then just wrong in the last ones? I honestly don't know why these. Uh, these might just be bad videos. That's what I'm saying. Like maybe the, yeah, the I mean, it looks team. like yeah. I I don't know. I don't know why it's not loading those. To be honest with you, but hmm. it might have something to do with the encoding. Yeah. Um, so that's a really cool use case of doing playlists. Let's do it. Let's do another. Sure let, live demos never go for. Yeah, right. <laughs> so now, I did that on purpose. Yeah. So now, now what I want to show you is um, now what I want to show you is some of the uh, really cool playlist capabilities that MediaFront um, has to offer. I know that I've already been kind of talking about playlists, but let me talk about like a widget-based playlist 